on this baptism, communion, fifth Sunday after Epiphany, and a special <laughs> welcome to our family's guests. My name is Douglas Ducharme, and together with Bridget Maya Douglas, we're really glad that you're here. Welcome here to this gathering place at St. Matthew's United Church with Bloor Street United Church together. For here is a place of unstinting welcome. Whether you know why you're here or you aren't sure, whether you have more questions than answers or answers in search of a question, you are welcome here. Whoever you love, you are welcome here. The language you speak, the place where you were born, the color of your skin, welcome to this community of the followers of Jesus. This is the first Sunday in February, Black History Month. One of the symbols of Black History Month is the Sankofa of West Africa. It's usually seen in the form of a bird with its head turned back, carrying an egg in its mouth. It represents the need to sometimes reach back into the past to get that which is important for life today. It's associated with a proverb that says that it is not wrong to go back for what you have lost. As the United Churches of Canada during February, we intentionally acknowledge and celebrate the contributions of people of African descent. We also lament the history and heritages that some have lost and we support them in the struggles that they experience. And we also acknowledge the sacred land on which we gather. This land here at this corner in the city has been a site of human activity for over 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat, the Patoon First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit. And today, this meeting place of Toronto is still the home to many Indigenous peoples from right across Turtle Island. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to gather here in community. May we be mindful of the broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. Let us ground ourselves for worship. So let us join our voices together in the call together. Bless my God, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless my God, O oh my soul, forgetting not all that God has forgiven us. Who forgives all our sins and heals all our infirmities. Who redeems our lives. Epiphany is a time God reveals God's self in Jesus as healer, as teacher, as friend, as favored one. So let the voices lift to God. Let us celebrate And so my friends, Indeed, we are words within the word. As baptized and baptizing people, let us pray. Sophia God, living water, river of mercy, source of life. Who quenches our thirst, refreshes our weariness. Be for us always a fountain of life. Honor and blessing we give to you. Amen.
February 2nd was the presentation of the Lord Day in the Christian calendar. In honor of today's baptism, let us listen to what the Spirit is telling us in this reading. The presentation of Jesus' reading is from the Gospel of Luke 2, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the hot Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what is customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of, his, of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is my practice to address the sermon at a baptism to the child who is being baptized. And usually the child doesn't understand. Usually the child is quite young, so it's okay that Benjamin has stepped away, it's fine. The family will be gifted a copy of the sermon at the end of today's service. For the adults here, it is an invitation to remember your baptism and to listen in on a love letter meant for our younger members, the future of our faith communities. The parents' task, and grandparents, you'll have to let them know, the parents' task is to hold on to this message and share it with their child when they think their child may need it the most. You will know when, and you'll know how. The message is for all of us, but mainly for Dear Benjamin, Today you join a priesthood of believers here at St. Matthew's United Church of Toronto. It is a time when our church is sharing worship with Bloor Street United, and about that I have a confession to make? The other day, an Ethiopian man came by the church asking if I had a winter coat. It was obvious that his tattered suit jacket was not enough to keep him warm 
on a frigid January day. I knew that Bloor Street had been collecting clothes for refugees. And so I went into the little office and gave the young man a brightly colored puffer jacket. As I write this, it occurs to me that maybe I should have called someone for permission. But distracted by a family meeting with the Este family and the urgency of this young man's needs, I gave the man a jacket that wasn't mine to give. Benjamin, you were baptized in the winter on the last Sunday before Transfiguration during the season of Epiphany, a time of celebrating how Jesus is revealed to us. The scripture God has gifted you, this is your own scripture for the rest of your life, is the story of Jesus being presented at the temple in Jerusalem, eight days or so after his birth, as was the custom. Like you, Jesus is the firstborn son, and like you, his parents love him so much that they wish for him to be part of a family of faith, a larger family. Something you may not notice is according to the religious law, his parents are either to present a lamb, think Passover, or two turtle doves, two pigeons. If they don't have enough money, they present the two turtle doves or two pigeons. So when Joseph and Mary show up with two birds, we are to understand that Jesus' family is poor. We often forget that Jesus sides with the poor and the outsiders because he understands what it is like to be hungry and to be made fun of as someone from Nazareth. He knows how it feels to be avoided, ignored, silenced, all forms of bullying. And it's part of the system that he is living in. There's a lot in our reading, but I want you to remember that part. I want you to remember that like him, no matter how people treat you, no matter how, what your condition, you are blessed. You are blessed by God's love and you are blessed with a task. First, God's love. Simeon took Jesus in his arms, praised God for peace, and said, My eyes have seen God's salvation, a light of revelation. This child is destined for the falling and rising of many to be a sign that will be opposed so that inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And Anna, who had never left the temple for over 30 years, when she saw Jesus, she began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for redemption. Some say Peter, some say Paul were the first ones to share the good news. Others say it was Martha and Mary at the empty tomb. But there it is, Benjamin. Anna was the first. Second, your task, all of our tasks. This is always also the first Sunday of February, which is Black History Month. My hope is that one day when you read this, February will only be a month of celebration or maybe reconciliation, but not a month to lament the injustices of the very things that Jesus experienced hunger, being made fun of, avoided, ignored, silenced, bullied. But if it is, if there are stories of African refugees, you know, refugees from non-European nations that no one will house, 
or if there are young men or women that people avoid or make fun of or silence who look more like me than you. Don't wait for an invitation to be a friend. Don't wait for it. Simeon waited, Anna waited many years. Jesus, the promise of God's love and salvation has already come. Beloved, don't wait for it. Give away what's not yours to those who don't look like you, to those who have less than you, or especially to those who don't believe as you. Think like you, speak like you, eat what you eat, play games that you play, or who have different friends or no friends. Don't wait for it. Give away what's not yours to give. Give away God's love. We are all called to love our neighbors, which sometimes involves the courage and wisdom to change the way things have been, to change the way that things are. We're also gifted forgiveness. It involves loving justice, showing extreme kindness, and being humble before God, not because it's required of you, as in Micah 6. God's grace means you are loved regardless, but because God is love. And as a baptized person, you have been given the assurance of God's love. Don't wait for it. Give it away and see, see what happens next. I suspect that there will be celebration and a little less lamentation. Wouldn't that be great? Don't wait for it. Give your love away. And borrowing from your reading, beloved, May you grow and become strong. May you be filled with wisdom. And may the favor of God be upon you. Amen. And so parents, you stepped out. This is Benjamin's sermon. You will know when you can give him this copy. You might want to make multiple copies. <laughs> You'll know when. This is for him. Amen. Amen. Loaves abound. And so go out into the world. The world is waiting. Go in peace. Indeed, go in peace. And don't wait for it. Step up, be a friend, be an ally, smile, just a smile sometimes. Whatever you do, do it out of and in love, remembering that you follow Jesus. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the ever-abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, be with us now and forevermore. Amen.